while you're still standing, go ahead and just turn to 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. We're going to pick up for where we left on last Sunday, dealing with the woman, the widow woman, and Elijah. But as a, as a great revelation, I believe God is getting ready to bless us with. Amen. Amen. You guys feel good? Amen. Talk back to me, family. Come on. Come on. Talk back to me. I promise if you talk back to me, I'll I make sure you make it to brunch. I promise. I promise. I promise. Verse 8, and it reads, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath and he arrived at the gate of the village. He saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, will you please bring me a little water in a cup? Somebody say little. As she was going to get it, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. But, he, but she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. Somebody say little. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal and then my son and I would die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. Then he used what's left, then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, there will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Come on, somebody. If you don't mind, family, you're taking notes. I want to preach from this subject matter today. If you're taking notes, just write down, help. I'm drowning with my seeds. Help. I'm drowning with my seeds. Before you take your seats, I, I want to share this because the more we get an understanding of the seed that God has placed in our hands, is it a need? Is it greed? Or is it a seed? Because if we don't understand what God placed in our hand that is, that is not a need, that is not greed, but it's actually a seed. Because here, family, here it is. You don't eat your seed. You plant your seed. So a lot of times we're drowning with our seeds because we're eating our seeds. Hear the word of God. God is saying that the more we lean in with him, he shows us what's a need, what's a greed, and what's a seed. Because we're called to plant our seeds. You may be seated, family. Amen, amen, amen. Can we put our hands together for worship, family? Come on. I'm telling you, our worship team is growing, family. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. That's the Marquise and the team is growing. They're doing such an awesome job. For all of our C kids, middle school and high school, you guys can be dismissed if you're not already in the hallway. Your leaders are waiting for you. But family, come on, I, I got a big announcement. We're we going to get back to the message. I promise you, I said I'd get you to brunch. I promise. But come on, is anybody excited for this big announcement that the church has to share, family? <laughs> family, uh, I, I'm just always blown away of, of our celebration family. We have an awesome family here. Come on, somebody. We have an awesome church here. For the, for the past year, we, we've seen how this church have, has gratefully and stewarding the very seed 
that God has placed in our hand. We've seen so many wonderful testimonies. Even back in February, if anybody remember this series, come on, share your story. We, we just begin to see what God is up to and what God is doing in the midst. So many families are being blessed. So many kids are being blessed. And, and God has been so faithful. And even coming in this month of August, we believe this. Hear this. We believe this. This month of August, the number eight, represents new beginnings. That not, God is not only doing something fresh in this church, but what flows through this church also flows to the families. And I believe that God is doing something new in your life as well. So I'm here to announce, family, come on, beginning on September the 11th, come on, next month, we are going to be transitioning from Regal Theater, and we're going to be having worship service, come on, somebody, at John Lewis High School. Come on. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Come on. God is so faithful. Come on. I know they got some pictures on the screen. Come on. God is so faithful. Family, the reason why I'm sharing this, because God has taken us from glory to glory. Yeah. That we've seen for over a year, even coming back from the pandemic, we love having worship service in here. But I'm telling you, family, this facility is phenomenal. That this is, you can look around and you can see even the seats, the people that's not here right now. We're believing that God is sending some new folks. That we're in a season right now that we are expanding and hear the word of the Lord. God said this back in February and I, I've been sharing it with my team. I'm gonna share it with you right now. That God said back in February, even when me and myself and Pastor Brenda said yes, God began to say, prepare your nets. Yes. Put many your nets together because I'm getting ready to do something that your current net can't even hold. Yes. And God said, begin to prepare your nets. And as we begin to transition into this place, hear my heart, join in with us. Yes. Join in with us, family. As, as a team, before the team goes into the play their game, here's all hands are in the huddle. Yeah. Here's what you can do, family. Begin to pray with us. Yeah. Can you do that, family? Yeah. Before I ask you to do anything, please pray. Begin to pray that God will send fresh families. Begin to pray that God will send the heartbroken. Begin to pray that God will send the lost. Even the community that's in Springfield, we're just believing it's getting ready to get better because God's presence is there. That God is sending a group of remnant people who are so cold, who are so in fire for God that God is getting ready to do something phenomenal. Amen. That pray with us, but also serve with us. Serve with us, family. Here's why I say that this facility is going to be able to house our Sea Kids ministry. That, if, that what you're seeing across the hallway, maybe you're not seeing, maybe your kiddos are in there, but our also our middle and high school is going to have their own space. Yeah. That, we're, that we're seeing that our middle and high school is expanding. That's middle and high school, there, there's the kids who actually want to be bussed in, and we're working through um, um, logistics right now, begin to bust in middle and high schools that I'm believing, I'm believing with all my heart that our student ministry is getting ready to explode. That our student ministry, that our kids are getting ready to go back to school, but now we're sending our kids back to school equipped. Hallelujah. They're equipped with the presence of God. They're equipped with a weapon to go ahead and go into battle because we understand the warfare that our kids are in. Here's the church that you're a part of, family. And this is why I say pray with us. Serve with us. But even as we get ready to transition, give with us. Give your time. Give your effort but also give your seed. Because could this be a place, here's what God is saying, and I'm being very transparent right now. God continues to say, Anthony, can you imagine? Amen. What, if, what if? What if this be a church who is so blown away with generosity? What if this be a church who is so blown away with, with releasing their time? What if this be a church who is called by my name, will humble themselves, turn away from that, but turn away to God and see what God can do? Yeah. Hear me when I say this, family. Yeah. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. I love the history of this church, but to be honest, we shifted into a new season in February, and we are just getting started. Come on, can you put your hands together for that family? Amen. Go ahead and have your seats. Amen. September the 11th, Spring on John Lewis High School. Come on. Speaking of, of giving, I want to speak about the power of your seed family. I, I really do believe that even in this series right now that God is, 
He, he's been touching our minds the last couple of weeks. We talked about fear and we talked about anxiety and we talked about our heart issue. And I believe that God is dealing with the whole life even through this series. That even right now, I want to talk about the power of generosity. That the understanding, the very seed that God places in your hand has power. That God is a generous God. That we understand that God so loved the world, he did what family? He gave. That, that he, he's showing us how to live a life in power. That generosity is, is, is actually a principle. That it is a principle that God has given us that if we would so choose to flow in this type of power principle, there's a power that's released. There's, there, um, there's, bl there's blessings that's being released in your life. See, but we, we live in a society, family, to be honest, uh, you guys know me by now, I'm very transparent because we live in a society where they would love to speak against the difference of what the Bible is saying. There's many voices, there's, there's many opinions, there, there's many things that's out there to influence you to, to actually walk in a different pattern that God has created for your life. And we have to make sure that we're doing an incredible job of making sure we stay close to God so that we don't walk in a pattern of the world. See, 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 Romans 12 and two says this family, do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's some patterns out there that say that you should not live a generous life. Amen. There's some patterns out there that says that, 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 that should I give or should I not? Can I keep it real? Should I tithe? Should I not? Should, should I give my time to this or should I not? See, we live in a society now where more people are protecting their seed rather than releasing their seeds for various reasons, for, and in my heart for various incredible, great reasons, valid reasons. But the more I go through his word from Genesis to Revelation, we understand that God is a generous God. And God is teaching us, regardless of what the patterns of the world is saying, that he called us to be generous. That he calls us to. So I, I, I want to speak as we begin to go through, and I'm, I know we, we got a lot to cover, so I'm going to go through pretty quick, but I want, to, I want to talk about a few false patterns out here when it comes to living a life of generosity. See, see my, the first pattern is, it's all mine anyway. Why should I give? Come on, fam, you better talk back to me today. We're talking about money. Come on, we're going in. Come on. It's all mine anyway. Why should I give? See, see, to be honest, family, God has called us to be owners of nothing. That's right. But he called us to be managers of everything. When we shift our mentality of understanding, even through our labor, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to who? God. And understand it being a good stewarder that we're not an owner. He's called us to be a stewarder. Yes. So sometimes I have to even check my own self because when I'm dealing with unnecessary stress, I have to check this. Am I being a good stewarder over the very thing that God has placed in my life? Am I eating my seed or am I releasing my seed? Because when I release my seed, Leah, here it is, family, there's a principle in life. There's a principle that even unsaved people have grabs. That there's a principle that God has released into the world that people, that successful people understand that in order to get to where I have to go, I have to be generous. Because generous unlocks supernatural blessings in your life. And understanding this principle, I cannot get to where I have to go if I don't have a heart a generosity. Let me go pretty quick. Let me go pretty quick. Number two, if you're taking notes, please, please write this down. Number two, God will provide through other people. See, 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 God not only has a desire to bless you, but God has a desire to bless through you. That's right. See, see, God is not just creating so that he's giving you a seed so that you can be blessed. He's actually setting you up so that you can be a blessing to others. See, we understand that Abrahamic covenant that God said, I will be a blessing to you to, so that you can be a blessing to others, that when God blesses you, it just doesn't stop at your household. 
When God blesses you, it just doesn't stop at your doorstep. That when God blesses you, that in your vicinity, everybody's getting ready to get saturated because God's blessing doesn't stop. Generosity is eternal. Generosity continues to flow. See, I want to shift into a place so close to God that when he blesses me, that we're constantly flowing in an overflow because when generosity is living in a house, the abundance is always present. That you're always living beyond yourself and God will say, I will never make sure you lack because I can trust you with little. That means I can trust you with more. And we can be a church that will get in a place that we trust God with being generous because we understand there's more where that has come from. So I don't mind releasing a seed because I know my father is in control of the seed. I'm looking to bless somebody else because I know my father's getting ready to back me up and bring more to my household. Don't stop the cycle because you're controlling your seed. This generosity is a cycle. It's a a cycle. Number three is my seed or gift doesn't count anyway. It's little. It doesn't count. Hear me when I say this. Never underestimate a seed that's placed in the hands of God. That we can see throughout the scripture that God loves to deal with little. That we see in the scripture that God can, he, he, he can flip it. And I know that's street terms. I apologize. But God can, he can multiply it. Yes. Yes. Do not underestimate the littleness that you have in your hands right now. Because it's better in the hands of God than it's in your hand. Number four says this. Oh, I love this one. Yes, I finally got to this one. I just don't trust these preachers. Come on, family. I ain't give, I don't trust them preachers. I don't blame you. It's a lot of mess out here, family. You got pastors, what? This chain don't cost that much. I can promise you that. But this pastor getting robbed in the pulpit with ridiculous amount. I, I, I get it, family. But one thing I, I can tell you this, and this is not even part of my notes. Me and Pastor Brenner, oh, we, we, we don't roll like that. We don't, we don't roll like that. Why? Because I love God and I love you. And I love what, uh, what knowing what God can do through a community that's together. Here's why we don't give based on our trust level to preachers, because we don't have to trust preachers. We trust God. Hear that even from me. I, I don't give based on my level of trust in a preacher. I give on based on my level of trust with God. Because if I believe God is in control, God is controlling the seed. Number five, I only give to certain projects I like. I love this one because even in this church, we give to some wonderful projects. Please understand your church is part of an organization. This church, even this location is part of, of, of giving to missions. We practice what we preach. And, and, but understand, even when I say that, please let me teach this real quick, because there's a lot of confusion out there between tithes and offerings. I, even the pastor, practice offerings. I, as a pastor, practice tithing. But understand, giving to offerings is separate from tithing. Because the tithe from the scriptures tells us, and yes, let me teach it. Oh, I'm going in right now. I can feel it. Let me, let me, let me get it. Because there's a lot of out there that even past pastors can, will preach this principle from a scare tactic yes. of scaring people yes. into tithing. That's right. And so they place fear on people and it's manipulation. And it's, it's a pet peeve of mine, to be honest, because we want to scare people into giving so we can have big buildings and do all of this. Yeah, yeah don't put that on online because I'm getting really ready to go in. But it's, it's a pet peeve of mine. But understand if you're teaching in the right way, it's actually life. It's life giving. It is a principle. It is, it's, yes, we are, we, it's, yes, it's not under the law anymore. We are saved by grace. But understand this, tithing came way before the law. We can see even back in Abraham, we'll begin to tithe. We, I can show you scriptures even in New Testament where Jesus began to talk about tithe. It's in the red letters. Come on, we got to believe that. <laughs> but I, wonder, I want you to catch this because just because it's not under law, it's still God's principle in life. That's 
Good. It's still God's principle yes. in life. If you will put me first, watch what I would do. Yes. If you will put me first in the 10%, I'll bless the 90%. Yes. I don't want to live a life walking around with 90% cursed. I want to live a life where God would touch the 10% and it flows over to the 90%. Here's what God is saying. Test me in an area and watch and see what I would do. How much do you trust him? Because God said, even when you release it, I can multiply it. That's the difference between tithe and offering. So please, let's be generous with, with, with giving to projects, but understanding the tithe belong in the storehouse. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. because I'm probably not going to get through all of this. Number six, I will become generous when I can afford it. Well, Hear me when I say this, family. You cannot afford not to be generous. Say that again. That's right. You cannot afford not yeah. to be generous. Because here's the power. And matter of fact, Pastor Brenda didn't even know we were going to be talking about this. She was preaching to me early this, on Monday. And she was saying, I know we have to give. Because I understand the blessings that come with it. And those blessings stop. Oh, my gosh. Where would we be? See, when you're understanding the principle of the unlockingness that happens in your life that comes from a, a heart that's generous, yes. you understand I can't live without this principle in my life because God will swim you out into the deep. See, it's very easy to stay back here on the edge and not live generous. Come on. Oh, I'm going there, but the more God take you higher and the more God take you deeper, you understand I have to be, I have to stay close to God with a generous heart because he said he will protect me from the devourer and if the devourer comes, my family is going to be touched. If the devourer comes, the blessing that's in my life is going to be touched. If the devourer comes, where would we be? So this is what God is saying. I will protect the devourer all for your life if you would choose to put me first. Put, putting God first. Let me go, let me go, let me go. Calm down, calm down, because I got to get through, I got to get through, I got to get through. Let me, let me do this, number eight. Let me, I'm going to jump to number eight so I can get into the, the scriptures. Here's the last one, here's the last one. Honestly, and this is a big one, this is why I put it the last one. Honestly, people are just afraid to give. That's what it is. People are afraid to give. Here's why. Because we can easily fail to understand that giving is a process. Yes. That giving is a principle. Yes. But the reality of the world will tell us or influence us, we only see loss. Yes. See, see, this is the same thing, investment. See, you have to trust something That's in right. order for it to grow. But when it comes to giving, I'm in, I want to be in complete control so it eliminates the blessing that God can put on it. Yes. But you have to trust God at his word and release it from your hand and release it into God's hand. So you see here, here, as we get into the word, watch this family because in, in 1 Kings, here's an incredible lesson about generosity. Never before, to be honest, I really looked at this scripture based on generosity. Normally, we would just concentrate on the widow house being blessed. Normally, we would concentrate on the widow's son being raised. Normally, we, we would just concentrate on that she lived in abundance in a drought time. But what I love about this scripture, as I began to study a couple months, ago, I mean, a couple weeks ago, I love in this scripture because there was right before the blessing became, right before the blessing came another, um, before blessing. I can't even talk. Right before the blessing came a blessing. There we go, Anthony. Yes, sir. And here's what the blessing was: a test. Could it be that God can have you in a season of your life? where he's testing you. Yes. See, would we, could, could it be that God would say, a lot of times we don't like tests. I know I don't. I don't like no pop quiz. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't like it. But could we begin to change the pers perspective of our mind and see the test actually a, as a blessing? Because when you pass a test, come on somebody, you move on to the next. And a lot of times we're still stuck at the test and we can't get to the next dimension with God because we fail to pass the test. 
God, where else to test me? And I love right here that even with the, 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 the widow woman, right when Elijah released the word, he was testing her faith. He, see, let me prove it. Let me, let me prove it because he, he goes into verse 13. He says this, but Elijah said to her, they're going to put it on the screen for you. Verse 13, but Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead. Do just what you said, but make me a little bread first. See, this is a woman who's dealing with little. Come on, somebody. Maybe you had a little time. Maybe you have a little patience. Maybe you have a little money. Maybe you're in a season of little, and right before the blessing came, Leah, God asked for a piece of the little. See, it doesn't matter. This is why his word says, do not despise small beginnings. Because even if it's small in your life, God is still testing your heart. Do you still trust me in the little? So I want to preach to some people who are in a season of their life dealing with little. Throughout this the whole um, series, God has been shaping this thing for us. A little thought leads to a, a bigger thought. A little truth leads to a bigger truth. Even right now, we can see that she had little and it's getting ready to lead to something bigger. See, can I, can I preach it to you a little bit? Maybe you have little seeds in your life. And God is saying, can I trust you with the little because I'm getting ready to shift you to the bigger. And God is saying, we can be a church that can, that can steward the little that he places in our hand. Oh my gosh, what it gets ready to take us to a more abundant life. Let me give you three points. I'm going to go through and I'm going to break it down pretty quick. I got you. I got you. I promise. You with me, family? You with me? Let's go. Because I want to give you three keys to living a generous life. I want to give you three keys to living a generous life so that we don't drown with our seeds. Number one, write this down. Generous givers live a God first life. Amen. See, go ahead, put, put, uh, team, put, put verse 13 back up on the screen for us. Oh, I want to take you to Bible study real quick because watch this principle. Throughout Genesis to Revelation, the generous principle is so prevalent throughout the scriptures. That is just not Matthew 6, uh, 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom. That from Genesis all the way to Revelation, we can see this principle, this theme outlined through God's word. And look what God is doing. He said, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. For me first, and then what it says, then... Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. If you can just give to me first, sow it to him first. Here's what God is saying. God is saying that you can do whatever you want to do with the rest. But can I trust you with a piece? Can I trust you with a percentage? Because here's why. Here's the principle behind. I want, I want to teach it. Because God cannot bless what you don't release. God loves you so much that he's, he's instructing you. Hear the word of Elijah to her. Before the blessing came to bless her, her, her family, her son was getting ready to experience death. They were on their deathbed and the generosity principle was still applied. God does not forsake the generosity um, principle just because you're on your deathbed. Here's why. Because the generosity principle brings life. So a lot of times we're struggling with, with death in our finances, death in our relationships, death in our mind. And here's what God is saying. Release the generosity principle on it so that I can breathe on it, so that I can multiply, so that you can walk in an increase. You cannot get to where you want to go if you don't release it to God. And here on their deathbed, God is still teaching a generosity principle. You would think that God would at least say, well, you know what? When you get a little bit more, come on, Marquis. Then I, I, I would tell you about generosity. But even right here, God is still saying, release it. First, then what's left. Write this down. Whatever we release to God first is never lost. It's always a gain. Any first thing giving is never lost, but any first thing not giving is always a loss. Watch this principle, Matthew 16, 25. 
If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Something completely different. When you read that scripture, you don't read it in a principle of generosity. But it's a principle of generosity. It's a principle that God is saying, if you try to save it or preserve it for yourself, it will eventually diminish. But if you live in this principle of generosity, if you actually release it to me, you're actually saving your life. The world teaches a completely different pattern of thinking. The world will teach you to save it. The world will teach you, come on, my grandmother, put it under the mattress. The world will teach you, hey, here, here's what I'm saying. God is saying whatever you try to save for yourself, if you don't give a portion of releasing it to him, he can't bless it. He can only bless what you release. He can only bless what you expose. He can only bless what's not hidden anymore. God can only bless. We can, that's a whole principle, and I'm not going to stay there, but that, that, that's a whole principle because a lot of times it's whatever you expose, the truth grows. So, so if we believe his word, even through our own mind, even through our own body, but even in our finances, if we expose our finances to truth, it will grow. If I expose my mind to truth, it will grow. See, because Elijah is teaching this woman here, even in little, to always expose her life to God. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Number two, generous givers sow on good ground. Where you sow matters. Where you sow matters. Matthew 13, 3 and 9. I'm going to read quick. Then he told them many things in the parables, saying, Consider the soul who went out to sow. And he sowed some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where it didn't have much soil, and it grew up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. Other other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it. Still other seed fell on good ground and produced fruit, some 100, some 60, some 30 times what was sown, that anyone who has ear, listen, what kind of sower are you? That's what God is saying. Anthony, what kind of sower are you? Because any ground that's fertile by the presence of God will grow. Where you sow matters. So my question to you, what's choking out your seed in this season? This is just not a heart matter, but I also believe it's a finance matter as well. Because if we don't place it on good ground, it, it will never grow. And we can find ourselves sowing into rocky soil, choky, thorny soil. (laughs) And we're wondering why, God, why does it seem my pocketbook has a hole in it? Come on, somebody. Why does it seem that my wallet has a hole in it? Did I never get to experience the fruit of my labor, God? Because the devourer will always come and eat away of it if it's not on good ground. Let me teach it, let me teach it. Write this down, number three, number three. The seed of generous givers get multiplied by God. Go ahead and invite the team back up. Number three, the seed of generous givers gets multiplied by God. Family, I truly believe in the principle of multiplication. I truly believe in the principle that whatever we release to God, he multiplies. See, see, watch this in Malachi 3, uh, 10 and 11. Watch this, and then I'm going to go to 1 Kings because I want to I unpack it. This is so much, man. I might have to do a part two. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, I will rebuke the devourer for you. I will rebuke the devourer 
for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. See the powerfulness of this? Watch 1 Kings 17, 15, and 16. 15 says, so she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. In order for something to multiply, it has to be protected. In order for something to grow, it has to be what? Protected. Here's the generosity principle. When we release it to God, it not only, it not only multiplies, God's hand is on it, which means it's protected. So I ask myself, I ask myself this all the time, what's in my life that's left vulnerable to something to come along and devour it? What's in my life that's left unprotected? What, what, what seeds that's in my life is out here that's only protected by me, but not protected by the hand of God? Because this is a powerful principle. We, we can constantly see that whatever we release to God, he multiplies it. I wrote this down in my notes. Living a life of generosity will always lead you to a life in abundance. Let's stand to our feet. Because maybe that's you today, family. Maybe that's you, that this principle of generosity, that's a question that you can ask yourself. My God, am I, am I flowing in this principle of generosity? Because this principle is not just an external issue, because you can never fix an external issue until you fix the internal issue. That when it comes to living a heart of generosity, it's all about your heart. Where's my heart, God? Where's my heart? So here's what we're praying today, family. As we get ready to go back into worship, here's what I'm believing, that this will be a house. Hear my heart, that this is a generous house. That the seeds that God is placing in our hands, that we're constantly asking God, what more can you do with it? That the seeds that God is placing in my hand, God, who else can benefit from this? I know that I'm moving in little, Lord God, but when I release it back to you, God, your word says, test you at your word, you will multiply. That this family went in a drought, hear me. They went from little to surviving in the midst of a drought. All first because they were generous. Let us not live in a season of our life in drought way too long because we miss the principle of generosity. How, how can you respond today, family? How can you respond in, in, in your heart? Man, God, where am I missing you at in your word? Is it with my tithing? Is it with my offering? This is stewardship. It's just not about money. It's about my time, treasure, it's, am I being a good stewarder over the very thing that you have placed in my life? Because God, let us, none of us in here live a life where we're drowning with our seeds. Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you, we thank you for your word. We thank you for that your word gives life. That God, you're opening up our eyes to even more. That your word says, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard. Can we, we can't even imagine what you have for us down the road. Let us play our part in obedience. Let us play our part with a generous heart. Let us play our part with trusting you because what's ever in your hand is better than in mine. Touch us, Lord God. Teach us, Lord God. Let the Holy Spirit instruct us because we know we want to follow behind you, Lord God. Let us not conform to the patterns of this world, but let us be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Renew our minds today, Lord God. Renew our minds, touch our minds. Give us fresh revelation on this principle. Give us, give us deep insight 
on this principle for all of us in here in our online family, wherever we may fall, where we, where we don't get it right, Lord God, thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for still pouring your blessings out, but you're telling us, God, that you're getting ready to move us from crumbs to the whole loaf. That there's so much more that we're leaving on the table that we don't even know about. Take us to more. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dude, some of the patterns that Pastor Anthony talked about resonated with me. It resonated with me well because I was a young teenage girl and I was blessed by my Sunday school teacher with a Bible that blessed my life. It blessed my life because of her generosity. And I was also a young woman that was church hurt and that had stopped giving. And then God used some of these patterns in my life to turn things around for me. And then I am generous in giving. <laughs> One time I had parked in a handicap zone and my car was towed for the exact amount that my tie was. I cannot make this up. When I went to pick up my vehicle and they told me what it was, I was like, God, are you kidding me? Like, this is real, the principle of giving, the principle of being a blessing to others, the principle of sowing. God, I thank you, Lord God, for whatever pattern we've fallen into, whatever pattern we found ourselves in, Lord God. I thank you that you are a loving Savior, Lord God. You're willing and able to reach in and pull us out, Lord God. You are able to do a thing with our hearts, Lord God, to show that you are all by Father, Lord God. You are omnipresent, Lord God. You're the one that gives and you're the one that's able to take away, Lord God. You're the one that gives us a seed, Lord God, making us sowers, Father, making us, Lord God, a part of the script, Lord God, that you are writing, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are including us. You're making us, Lord God, be a blessing to others, Lord God. You are involving us in the details, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you have written us in this story. I thank you, Father, for the funds that you have blessed us with, Father. And I pray, Lord God, that you put our hearts in position, Lord God, that we won't desire to hold on to it, Lord God, that we won't be afraid, Lord God, of losing it all, Lord God, but we will have our arms, Lord God, and our palms open wide to you, Father, and submit unto your will, Lord God, that your will will be done, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for the blessing over the homes, Father, the ones willing to give, Lord God, and the ones that don't understand the principle yet, Lord God. I pray that you be a teacher, Lord like never before, Father, for this principle, Lord God, just like you had to be for me, Lord God. It wasn't funny at the time, but now I look back over all you've done, over every way you have provided, over everyone that you have called, Lord God, to be a blessing in the seasons, Lord God, when I didn't have, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. Because through other generosity flows your love into others. And I thank you, Father, that you are loving, you are just, and you are kind to us. A good Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now is the time in our service for offering. And I'm going to read to you Proverbs 11, 24. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I pray that you be refreshed. I pray that you be refreshed in the name of Jesus. And you're coming and you're going. I pray that you be refreshed. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you lack nothing. Yes. I pray that you have no concern, but that you trust in God with everything coming in and out of your bank accounts. I pray that you trust God with everything coming in and out of your hands. I pray that you trust God in everything. Seek God first. Seek God first. And I pray that he gives you guidance in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord keep you and may he prosper you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Another way that we can give is in our time and our talents. And this is an exciting time, family, because our Sea Kids ministry needs your seeds, yes. your seeds of time and your seeds of gifts. From eight months, this ministry has grown from eight children to 85. And we're talking from six months to 17 years old. And now that we are going into a new land, it's a land overflowing with classrooms, which means overflowing with children. And we need 18 more team members to come and serve alongside what is already an awesome Sea Kids ministry team. And can you please, if you have children over there, please give them a, a round of applause and a God bless you uh, for the work that they do. And so as we are moving into a place of abundance, we are calling forth these new children and we need your gifts to come alongside and grow this next generation. And it doesn't have to be that you like spending time with children, you're a teacher, you're even a baby whisperer, but there are so many other positions that go along with that ministry that you can help support. So check out the QR code, and if you're online, click the link in the description to see how you can give your seed of gifts and talents and time to see kids. Yes. So we're going to take this opportunity also to pray over our children. Amen. They are going back to school. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God. Because working from home with children, <laughs> it's been something. <laughs> so let's pray for the protection of our babies and that they have an amazing school year and also pray for the teachers as well. Um, God, I thank you, Father, that this is going to be a successful school year. I pray, Lord God, that every child entering the building, Father, will feel safe will feel loved, will feel nurtured and welcomed, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for every teacher that has prepared their lesson, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you will grace them with the patience like never before, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for their classroom, Father, that the atmosphere in the classrooms, Lord God, would be one where children could come in and learn and feel loved and feel like family, Lord God. Please, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you create an atmosphere in every school, Father, where the administrators, Lord God, can make wise decisions, Lord, that is in the betterment, Lord God, for the teachers, Father, in the best interest for the students, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for your protection, Father, over every student, over every staff, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would keep them healthy, Father. I pray that your grace and your favor, Lord, would be upon them, Father. I even pray, Lord God, that you bless the teachers and comes, Lord God. They need some more money. <laughs> God, I thank you, Father, for the future of the, the children, Lord God. I pray that they will all excel and go off to life and do amazing things, Lord God. I pray that you bless us, Lord God. May you keep us. May your face shine upon us, Lord God. May you be gracious to us. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Enjoy your weeks. Have a great God week. God bless you.